for the last year, we essentially haven't had any growth. And forget all this political debate over whether we had a recession because we had negative growth in two consecutive quarters. The National Bureau of Economic Research is the one ultimately that defines whether we've had a recession or not. And they do that with about a year lag after the actual event occurs. So they haven't pronounced anything yet. And they're not gonna pronounce by, in my judgment, that we actually had a recession in the first and second quarter, even though we had negative growth. But the question is, where are we going? And where are we going is determined by where the money supply is going. It's the quantity theory of money. We've been on this on your program many times. The quantity theory of money is a way to determine national income determination, where it's going and what do we have. If you look at all the underlying core inflation metrics, actually they're going up. So we have still lots of inflation in the system because of that surge in the money supply growth in early 2020 and really throughout the year in 2020 going into 2021. Now, what do we have? The last seven months, the last seven months, the money supply has actually contracted by 1.1% the last seven months. That's uh, almost unprecedented. And that means, of course, you have a big change in the money supply and then there's a transmission mechanism. There are lags between the thrust in the money supply, whether it's going up or going down, and what happens in the real economy, what happens to asset price, what happens to inflation. So sometime in 2023, we've got a, a pretty big inflation baked in the cake. So these numbers, it's a great thing. You can celebrate it today. It's not negative anymore. We had a positive number, a little over the consensus, a little under the Atlanta now forecast. The whole picture looks like the economy's flat for the last year, but it's going to head south. And we know it's going to head south because the money supply is contracting. And we know it probably will continue to contract because the Fed is not looking at the money supply and they're engaged in what they call quantitative tightening where their, re their contribution to the money supply by the Fed is actually contracting itself, keeping the money supply <laughs> even close to level is a contribution made by the commercial banking system and we don't know how long that's going to last. That's been declining, by the way. It's still positive, Two but, it, but it's been reducing. So that's the picture. The main thing is not looking in the rearview mirror, but looking forward out of the windshield. And we've had a recession coming. And why do I say that? The money supply has actually contracted over the last seven months. That's a big deal. No one looks at the money supply. That is the thing you have to look at if you're looking for where national income is going, where, where the real economic activity as well as inflation is going. Bringing the money supply down from an average growth rate that, that it had been for the last two and a half years of around 15%, bringing it down to the golden growth rate of about 5% or 6%, that's consistent with a 2% inflation, that's fine. Hmm. Bringing it, in, in, contracting it is not fine. I see. Because you still have a lot, remember the old monetary bathtub, you still have a lot of excess money in the bathtub. It will come out as inflation. And now you're going to squeeze things so much with this quantitative tightening that, and it's already showing up with no growth in the money supply basically for seven months, you are going to have a situation where you have, if I can use the S word, stagflation. We will have a recession and we will still have this excess money coming out of the inflation overflow into the economy. So inflation will slow down but we'll still have a lot of inflation. Now, John Greenwood and I, as John and I collaborate in analyzing and using the quantity theory of money to 
estimate where the inflation's going. And remember, July, now do you want to give us a recession? And the Fed appears to want to do that. But they're not even watching the money supply. So I really don't know what they're doing, how they're calibrating anything. They really have no clue of what they're doing. I think they're excessively tight with this quantitative tightening that they've got underway. Yes. And in addition to recession, we could have some real liquidity problems in the market. That's another downside. Yeah. But this is charted territory. You get this string of seven months of no monetary growth, and they have announced, and they are engaged since June in quantitative tightening, shrinking the balance sheet. And what's that mean? That means the contribution to the broad money measure M2 by the Federal Reserve is going to be negative. They won't be contributing anything. So the only thing that will be keeping the money supply growing is what the commercial banks are doing. And the commercial banks so far have more or less offset the contraction and the negative contribution by the Fed. But we don't know if that will continue or not. It's pretty clear Andrew Bailey, who's the governor of the Bank of England, doesn't know what he's doing. He's not watching the money supply either. He's exactly like Powell. Neither one of them pays any attention to the money supply. And as a result, they've got things in one hell of a mess in the United Kingdom and in the United States. Now, the United Kingdom, by the way, their inflation rate is 10.1%. Uh, 10 10.1%. So they have even a bigger inflation problem than we do. Plus, they have, before I get off the Bank of England and, and the Federal Reserve, both of them have not been able to anticipate the inflation that they have caused. And, and they look like both of them are going to drive their respective economies into, infl into recession. So you've got stagflation. I would say that in the military, if you screw up and miss a target, you end up with what's called an after-action report. Now, the after-action report tries to find out why did they screw up? Why did they miss the target? And, and usually, by the way, those are followed with court-martials. So that's what should be going on. Instead, Who's gonna get we've got two governors that I think would go out the window in a hurry in, in an after-action report. They'd both be court-martialed immediately. The, with regard to the Fed, you've got Jerome Powell, and regard to the Bank of England, you've got Andrew Bailey. Now, England, there, there's a, another little twist in the, in the UK story, and that is you've had two duds as prime ministers. You had Boris Johnson, and Boris Johnson's problem is that he's a big gas bag. He's full of hot wind. He, he has no, he had no interest in any details in terms of economic policy. And the worst thing, he was a big warmonger. He got the UK into this war they're in with the Russians. Now that, that is a big problem because it dents confidence. And of course it puts a big hole in the budget. The budget deficit is way too great. And the only way to establish confidence is to reduce that fiscal deficit and you do that with a tax increase and a squeeze on government spending. So then what, what about monetary? They goose the money supply Yeah. on the recommendation of Walters. And Walters knew as a good